Okay, first of all, I want to want to uh, thank Huddle, Dave and Matt and Kaylee and Ash Ashley. No, Alicia, Alicia, for this. Uh, it's always kind of weird when you're just talking to your computer. But uh, so I've got 45 minutes. What I would like to do is take maybe the first 30, 35 minutes and try to go through this. Uh, before the, uh, they close the curtains on us and then Q&A at the end. So what I'm going to talk about today is basically, you know, you've heard this you know, from NFL football and stays to college football, high school football as a whole RPO world, which has become quite the, uh, quite the deal here the last few years. So um, what I want to really hit on is, okay, so really what, who are we identifying for the RPO world? How are we coming up with our, what we call our conflict defender? Uh, back in 2009, 2010, when we really started doing all this RPO draw stick and the zone read with the key screens and the comets and all that kind of stuff. Um, you have, if you want, in any offense, we're always looking for a couple of things. And, and one is we're always trying to out leverage the defense. We're always trying to outnumber the defense. So obviously the whole RPO system, the old RPO system is based on any defense with their run fit defenders are always having, they have to defend the ABCD gap on both sides of your, of your formation. And who is going to fit, who is going to be the D gap fitter or the C gap fitter or the B gap fitter. That's who we're trying to identify. So the next thing we're trying to do offensively is we're always trying to play with a little tempo. We're trying to play fast. So it can't be, um, it's gotta be something that has to hit your players brains quickly, especially your quarterbacks brain quickly because you're trying to play fast. He's looking for coverages. He's looking for conflict players. He's looking for RPOs. He's looking for all this stuff. So this is kind of how we teach, how I teach my guys. All right. Is as they learn concept, obviously I'm just going to take two examples for you guys right here. And this fits for any kind of anything in your offense. And we actually use the same type of uh, teaching uh, for our passing game. All right. Uh, so say our run, run concept is Zoro Zulu. All right, for us, which is zone read. The scheme is zone read with a five-man surface. In other words, we only have five blockers in the box. We don't have two backs. We don't have another back blocking or a tight end blocking. We're basically in a spread set, all right? Well, the quarterback knows in this five-man surface is the conflict could be first-level conflict. So a player on the first level of the defense, being a defensive end or a man on the, on the, on the line of scrimmage. Okay, the play concept we're going to talk about is what we tag as LA, which is a three by th one, three by one zone read. All right, weak. So we're running the zone read away from the three receivers. Okay, now what's attached to this play is going to be key three. All right, and then a gift on the backside. So basically, what I'd like my quarterback to know is to know this part of this, the concept. All right, it's a zone read, five man surface, it's possible first level conflict. It's called Zoro Zulu, all right? When we attach the RPOs, the play is called LA, all right? And, and first thing I ask my guys to do is wide vision the defense. So in other words, I don't want them to read the book yet. I just want them to know the title, all right? Because there's a couple of things he's looking for. He's looking for, is, is it split safety? Is it post safety? Or is it pressure, all right? So today we're just going to talk about, is it split safety or is it post safety? So in other words, he's just going to try to get a feel for the defense. To me, it does a couple things. One is it gives him a feel for what the front should be and who his who his conflict players are. And the other thing it really actually does for your quarterback, it actually calms him a little, a little bit. He's kind of like, just like, okay, let me just kind of see what all you guys are lined up. Kind of give me the idea of where you guys are. All right. The next thing wide vision does to him, it gives him alerts. All right. He gets pre-snap alerts. All right, from leverage or from numbers. Okay, so post safety, split safety would give him a pre-snap alert of do I have leverage on this defense or have I outnumbered the defense? All right, or they've outnumbered me in the box. And then from there, his last step is he goes to what we call narrow vision. And basically it's where's Waldo? Because we're looking for Waldo. All right, so here's just an example of, 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 Move these out of the way here. All right. Of what we're talking about when we talk about the narrow vision. So his wide, narrow, wide vision. All right. So, so obviously in the top drawing, right? Say we're going to run three by one 
whatever the scheme is. Hell, it could be counter. It could be zone read. It could be draw. It could be whatever, whatever your five man run scheme is. Okay. So he takes the wide vision first and he says, okay, well it's split safety. So now he knows on a split safety defense, he is basic. He is basically feeling like, okay, where's Waldo? Who's the guy? Who's the important guy to me? All right. In this defense. It's like I, I tell my quarterbacks all the time, the more you see, the less you see. So read the, get the title of the book and now find out who's important to you. Well, in a split safety defense, all right, Waldo becomes a set. He's, he's basically the conflict player and he's a second level conflict because he's on the second level of the defense. So, so with this look, we, he should know that we have five blockers in the box and there should only be five defenders in the box. All right. So we're, we're teaching us is do we have leverage on Waldo? All right. Our second level defender. Okay. And I basically teach him that if you can get plus two yards of leverage on Waldo right here on my conflict defender, we want to throw the bubble. All right. The next thing we want, want our bubble uh, runner to know is he is, he wants to catch this ball plus two in the alley. All right. So you'll see as later on, as we, as we look, look at other things that we motion to this or we're in two back or it's a the back coming out of the backfield. We want the landmarks to be the same for the, for the, uh, for the bubble, for the key, key catcher and also for the key blockers and for the quarterbacks. All right. So in the same thing, like that, if you look down here at the bot, the next picture down here at the bottom is, is it, is it, he took a wide vision now. And he, he saw this as post safety. Okay. So now he knows that my, that Waldo now became a first level conflict player, not a second level conflict player. Cause they have obviously added somebody to the box. Most likely they've got six defenders in the box and I've only got five blockers. All right. So now Waldo becomes a first level conflict. So he's not thinking now about leverage throw to number two, to, to a plus two leverage throw off the mic. He's thinking about now I'm truly zone reading a first level conflict guy. But what he does think about now when he gets a wide vision of post safety is his, no, his, his numbers game is on the backside with what we call the gift. Because now we know we have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, throw into the boundary with our split end on their corner. So basically he knows it's zone read, I wide vision split safety. Hey, Waldo's the mic. Do I have leverage? If I've got leverage, throw the bubble. If I don't have leverage, we should have five on five in the box, well, no matter what the run is. All right. If it is a if he if he wide visions and it's a post safety type deal, all right, or they're rolling to three strong or three buzz or anything like that, he knows, hey, I'm first level conflict read on the end. All right. Or I pull and run off the end. Or his first thought ought to be, do I have a gift on the backside? All right. All right. So now we go to, all right. All right. Now we've now changed our play procedure, all right? Now our run, run concept is going to be Charlie, all right? Okay. Which now is a zone read concept with a six-man surface. Obviously, we've added a tight end or a back into the blocking surface. Okay. Well, now he knows on a six-man surface, he is a, it is a second-level conflict read for him. All right. So our, our play concept is cutter or cold. It's a three-by-one zone read. We, all right. But now we get, we get off of our key game, our key one, two, or three. And to go back, right, that's the game plan part. Do I want to – and we're going to watch some, some video here in a second. All right. Do I want to do I want to attach bubble? Do I want to throw the, the key screen to the Y, a key two, or do I want to want to throw the key to the outside guy, key one? All right. Or am I going to build it with motion and that what we call our comet? All right, which is the same, it has the same rules for the quarterback. All right. So we're not changing the play. We're just changing the presentation of the play to the defense. Like I said, we're always looking to out leverage or outnumber the defense. All right. So his wide vision is the same split safety, post safety, his alerts PSL is leverage split safety, key to leverage. All right. Post safety is the same as three by one, any three by one is gift post safety is gift. 
So now his, his narrow vision is now where's Waldo, all right? So he knows now we're in a six man surface, three by one, six man surface. He wide visions this, all right? It is no different than him than if the F was split, all right? So now he knows he's got a second level conflict player because it's split safeties, all right? With his wide vision. So he's doing the same thing. If, 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 hey, if Y has a plus two leverage of Waldo right there, we want to throw the key, all right? If he doesn't, right, we want to hand the ball off. So that's his vision. His narrow vision is Waldo, okay? They roll the safety down. They go to three strong or three buzz, okay? Well, Waldo is still a second-level conflict player to him, all right, but now his thought is backside gift. All right, that's where my numbers are on the backside gift. If not, all right, I read the Sam or Nick Sam, all right, as my uh, as my conflict player. He could be an edge rusher. He could play the run. All right, make uh, um, force me to pull the ball and run. But now they have run out of run out of options over there because they have to fit my key too with their strong safety. But basically what he's thinking is it's a give off of Waldo, all right? But I'm checking the gift on the backside, right? So the other only other thing that I just want to throw this slide up for you guys, all right, is that is when we're in two by two, okay? So if you go by your same rules on this, all right, split safety, all right? Split safety, okay? He knows now that the guy to the top of the screen in the circle, all right? That's his narrow vision guy, all right? His narrow vision player. He's the, actually the conflict player, all right? Down here to the bottom, and whether you tag it with a key screen or a quick game or hitches or whatever, all right? He knows that his PSL alert is if, is if this defender is playing the box, all right? He's controlling the guy at the top, but if the bottom defender is playing the box, all right? So that's just kind of a quick, quick, let me get out of this here, okay? That's just kind of a quick summary of what it is. And now uh, what I want to go to is, is our, hold on here. I'm going to go to the, the video of this. <clears throat> All right, let me get rid of down this. Okay, let me share this screen now. All right. Okay, hopefully this is all coming through to you guys right here. Okay. So now if we look at our RPOs, all right? So we start with our key game, all right? Our, our pure zone read, or our first level conflict. So we already talked about all these keys here on this side, right? We talked about, you know, you have different ways, key one, key twos, all right? Our bubble, our key threes, okay? So if we look at the tape on this, All right, so he came up, he, he comes, the quarterback comes up here, and I know it's a bad snap, all right, but he comes up, and the first thing his wide vision tells him, all right, the first thing his wide vision tells him is split safety. Get this thing to pause here. There we go. First thing this tells him is why is, is split safety, okay? He should be, be thinking, okay, where's Waldo? Waldo becomes, all right, the Mike linebacker who's pushed, all right, to my three by one. We've trumped this up out here, all right, bunched this up um, and went to key one instead of key three, same deal, all right. We're still blocking this thing for plus two in the alley on this, all right. That's our tunnel, 
that we're trying to build for our, our, our screen runner. All right. But he think he know he looks out and says, Hey, it's split safety. Waldo's the mic. I've got plus two yards of leverage. All right. He should be thinking, I need to throw this, I need to throw the key to, and what we call turn the double play. All right. So he wants to turn the double play. All right. To the key one out there. All right. And we're actually, we're actually running right here as we're running counter or ta our tank play. All right. And the reason, the reason that we, uh, that we like that plus two alley is because we're looking for a, what we call second base. All right. All our key screen runners. All right. And even our comet runners, our motion runners. All right. When we're bringing motion across to throw this stuff. All right. Is we want a landmark. So the quarterback always knows where this guy is. All right. A couple coaching points of throwing the keys. Right. Number one is we want to, like we said, we want the, the key, the key runner, the key, key screen guy to get to second base. All right. We want him to have his flat to step up, flash his shoulders back to the quarterback and also have a soft upfield shoulder. All right. Because we want, we need to throw this ball to his front number. So we talk about shoulder throws. So we want to throw this ball to his front shoulder. So that's not bad. I know he had a bad snap right there, but you can see how, how Josh steps back. We want him open. So when he gets the ball, he can get vertical in the alley as quick as he can. Okay. Same type of deal. Here's out of split safety. All right. So this was split safety. All right. He knows his conflict player is going to be this defensive end to his right because it is going to post safety look. Okay. You can see the post safety look. He knows I've got six in the, I'm sorry, split safety look. So he knows, okay, so they're blocking the four down in the mic. All right. So his PSL on split safety on the backside is his gift. So he sees he has plus two leverage into the boundary. All right on the defender. So here he is turning the double play, all right, to the boundary. Now, remember, we look at key screens, all right? We look at our screen game, okay? We look at our screen game the same way we look at our, at our run game. So all we want to do is got to convince our receivers and our quarterback that a four-yard game when I, gain when I throw a key screen is a win. And, and receiver, sometimes you got to lower your hat and just run over somebody, right? Because you are keeping us on schedule. This is a first normal down and distance call for us. It's first and 10. If we come out of this throw at second and six or second and five, we're happy. If it's second and seven, second and eight, and we come in at third and three, third and four, we're happy. All right. So this is a should be a high percentage throw, a catch and run. And it tells our receivers that are blocking is you've got to be physical at the point of attack. All right. You've got to be, you've got to guarantee when we throw this, our runner can make, is going to make four yards. So here he looks at, he looks at this one, All right? He sees a split safety look. He knows right now Waldo's so far in the box that he's turning the double play. All right. It's split safety. Waldo's I've got leverage on Waldo turn the double play. Okay, so now he's getting a post safety look. Okay, he does not see split safety. His his wide vision tells him, oh shit, this is I don't know if it's man zone. I don't care. I just know it's a post safety type defense. All right, so they obviously are going to overload me into the box. All right, um, so he knows on this look, we're going to point to the field backer with the line. So he knows it's going to turn to a first level conflict read on that defensive end to the backside, all right? But his first thought ought to be gift because that's where I've got the numbers. So he ought to come off on this, all right? And he ought to throw quick game to the gift. Okay, same type, same type deal here, all right? He saw wide vision. What do you see? 
I see split safety. All right. Who's Waldo? He's the nickel Sam standing outside, splitting the difference out there with the slot. Have I got plus two leverage? Yes, you've got plus two leverage. All right. Let's turn to double play. I'm not even thinking about the gift. Okay. Okay, same thing as we saw before, all right? Basically, he's got the 4-1 box. He knows it's split safety. Waldo's up top, okay? His gift on the backside is leverage, right? I'm not, I don't have a single receiver on the hitch, all right? I could throw pressure out or quick game, all right? But we just tag it with key two on the backside, all right? So he could, he could if he wanted to, throw in this on the backside, all right, as a, as a, as a PSL. Okay, but he instead he he's he's seeing the leverage on Waldo. All right, on top of the screen, he's seeing the leverage on Waldo of plus two or more. Okay, and now he's going to turn the double play. All right, to his key game. All right, got a few more minutes here. So um, these are all these are all the same. I mean, that's why we like the three by one into the boundary. All right, we like three by one into the boundary a lot of times so we can gain that leverage. All right, but if you look at every 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 one of these, all right, by rule, okay, by rule he should be throwing his gift to the field. All right. He should be throwing his gift to the field, but he still saw the, the leverage that we had on the Waldo player. All right. The, the backer that's rolled down. Okay. To this, his strong side, but I would be much happier if he just said, screw it. I'm just going to come throw. Now, a lot of times and that's a whole different uh, clinic talk is we coach our guys a little different if they're a three down team. All right. Because a lot of times on a three down team on a three, four front, all right, is this stand-up guy to the field, we have to count, and he scares our guy from throwing the, the quick game to the field sometimes. So we we got to count him, all right? So this game plan may be, hey, it's 3-4 team. We're going to count the line of scrimmage player to the field the line is. So now they're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, <laughs> all right? And Waldo now I'm just checking. Do I have wall? Do I have leverage on Waldo to the field? I mean, to the boundary right here. All right. So I'm gonna jump real quick because I just got a few minutes left here. All right. All right. So because I want to go to the next the next conflict player that we have all right so so we're building all right we are building now the three by one let me get back and start this one over here Okay, so we're going to build the three by one now. Remember, we talked about the three down front. Okay, so by building it, all right, now he has a, a di one different rule to him is, all right? All right, we've added a tight end to the scheme. So this is a six-man surface. We're building our leverage throw to the field, okay? So he knows that if, if, they, if they get... All right, if they stayed in split safeties with the motion, all right, it's a turn the double play throw to the motion back, all right? If they spin the safeties to post safety, now Waldo becomes the man on the end of the line of scrimmage right here. So we've, ha we've put hats on everybody in the box, all right, the six players in the box, and now he knows he's on a first-level conflict because it's post safety, right? It's what we said at the beginning. If they've spun this, if they spun the book post safety, all right, our our conflict player becomes right the 
the sixth defender, all right? Here, the seventh defender, the man on the end of the line of scrimmage, all right? So what he sees here is, all right, he rides this, all right, and he sees that he has leverage, okay? He has leverage on the end man on the line of scrimmage or his Waldo, his first level conflict player, all right? If this guy was to play the Comet, the screen, he would hand this ball off. All right. So the guy you can see that just came across the line right there. All right. The end. And I think he's probably the nickel Sam right there. All right. He's his conflict player. He's Waldo. He's got to make a decision. Either I'm taking the back or I'm going to soften and I'm going to help and play the comet out there because we've got numbers. So he ought to read him. Okay. When he sees him start to play the mesh. All right. The ball should come out on the comet. Okay, like I said before, you can do this with, hold on, Let me go to the next one here. Okay, we can do this with any scheme we want. Okay, this is kind of the, the same type of look. All right, he gets post safety, wide vision, post safety. Okay, he knows his conflict player right here is the nickel Sam. We've got six blockers in this box. They've got six defenders. Their extra run fit guy is going to be the conflict player, the second level conflict player. That's Waldo. All right. The nickel, nickel Sam that's, that's rolled down right there. All right. So he knows he's who I'm playing the game off. Now we're actually, I think running pin pull it at him right here. All right. But as we run pin pull, just like the last look you saw, he sees that Waldo is playing the run, playing the pullers. All right. So now he can deal the ball outside, all right, to our Comet. You can see again, like we talked about before was, all right, is that we try to get the ball on all these motions, all right, to his, in his hands, plus two on the hash, all right? We don't want him out there throwing this thing out to the numbers. We want these bubbles, these key screens and all that to where when he gets it, he's in that tunnel right there, the, what we call the alley. The tunnel, there are some where the tunnel is numbers to the out of bounds, all right? The alley is top of the number to the hash. So we're trying to get him plus two alley right there, okay? So we can run the alley. Okay, and this is probably the way we run it the most. Okay, we're always trying to build this. And this will be, well, then we can, I don't know if we got any uh, questions here. All right. But so he sees split safety. Okay. He sees split, the front, I mean, that's not, he, the whole line, the, the line is, is, is making adjustments to the front. All right. Um, but he sees split safety. So now he knows Waldo, all right, is the nickel Sam, who's kind of in the box right there, all right, is the nickel Sam, all right? With the motion, okay, he felt that he had two yards of leverage or he had leverage. Nobody moved. Remember we talked about earlier? Is the secondary moving? Is it split safety? No, all right? Nobody's moving. They're not spinning it. The, they're not spinning it. So he doesn't have to read anything right now. Okay. They're not spinning the, the coverage on the motion. All they're doing is bumping the backer. All right. Does his motion guy, just as if I had lined up in three by one, is his motion guy created plus two yards leverage on the nickel Sam out there? Yes. Turn a double play. All right. Turn a double play. If I was going to go back to this play and say with the motion, they spun the safety down. Okay. So they spun the safety down with the motion. They went to three strong. Okay. Just like he learned in three by one. 
what happens what happens when Walt when they when when your wide vision tells you it's post safety all right what's your first thought first thought is gift on the back side read a first level conflict player not a second level a first level conflict player to either give or pull off of him so his rules however we build is 3 by 1 once he learns his wide vision narrow vision where's where where where's waldo rules it doesn't matter how we build this it's always the same Hey, Coach, I just wanted to let you know that we've got about 10 minutes left. Do we have any questions? We have one, it looks like, so far. Okay. All right. So let me let me just hit this, and if it's only one question, then just give me the last couple minutes. Okay? You got it. Yep, perfect. All right. So last thing, all right. So now let's talk about second-level conflict. Okay, so that, that's his first level conflict rules, right? Split safety, post safety, wide vision, narrow vision. The safeties are going to tell you who's Waldo, all right? So now let's say we go to, uh, let me pick one here, okay? So now we go to our second level conflict reads. In other words, he knows now is that we never have, all right, and this is just one I just pulled up called rain. All right. He never has a. All right. He, ne he never has uh, a first when, he, when we say, OK, this is a second level conflict read. He never has a first level read. OK, we're never going to make him read the first level. We're going to always block his first level. OK, so. Example here, okay? If I had called first level, if I had called Zoro Zulu or a first level conflict read right here, obviously he sees post safety. He should be throwing, he could actually either throw the gift or he could even throw his, his key screen into the boundary, okay? Because he's got post safety, wide vision, all right? He knows they should have six in the box right here, okay? They've got their nickel sand to the field instead of the boundary where he should be. Okay, but we, but we've called we've called a second level conflict read for him, so he knows we're never going to give you the first level. Okay, you don't have the key screen to throw. You don't have all that stuff. Now we are strictly read. We are counting right. We are counting the five defenders and the end being blocked by the backside tackle. And now your read goes to a second level. Waldo now always becomes the second level. Uh, defender to the backside. All right. So we're man in the backside, whatever the scheme is to the field could be pin pull, could be zone, could be stretch, could be whatever. Right now, he, now we're instead of tagging key screens on the backside of this. All right. Now we're tagging quick game, three steps, three steps, uh, drop game. All right. So in this example here, he knows that the guy coming off the backside edge is his conflict read. All right. So if he if he if he doesn't if he runs through a backside gap, all right. I usually tell my guy I usually tell my guys to give the ball, but if he comes outside the man, outside the tackle, all right. Now this is a pull and throw to the backside quick game. Okay, same thing here. Okay, he sees split safety. All right, he split safety. Doesn't really matter that much to him. And this uh, on the second level conflict reads his wide vision. He'll still take a wide vision to get a feel like who is going to be the conflict guy. He knows here it's a three down front. His conflict guy is the Mike or the Sam Backer sitting just outside the, the four technique to the top of the screen. All right. We are going to block the rest of these guys. All right. If he feels, if he feels that guy plays the run, all right, which he should have 
handed this ball off, but he got away with it. All right. But number seven right there is basically his conflict. We've got one, two, three, four. There's a pin pull. He knows seven's got to play the run. If seven doesn't play the run, let's hand this thing off. Which if he'd have handed this thing off, we'd still be running then too. So didn't make the right decision. All right. But that, that shows you who his conflict guy is. He was a true freshman then. All right. I think we saw this one Went the wrong way. Okay. Okay, same thing here. He sees split safety, all right? He knows they've got four down to the will, to the field. His conflict guy is the bat. His is a second-level conflict read. We're going to block the four down and will on this. He knows I am. I, my conflict is the backside backer right here, all right? If he, if he plays across the ball, all right, this is a pull read. All right, and he should throw his conflict. Now, this just happened to be 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 one of the quick games we attached to some of them. There's there's double slant, there's clear slant. I mean, that's kind of the game plan piece of it. There's it out of bunches. So all the different ways that you build this on the backside. All right, we built we built this one with a slant and a key. All right, it's kind of his bailout throw. So if this guy was to chase the slant in on the back on the boundary here, he would come out here and throw the key, would be his bailout throw. All right. But you can see right here is that he is he has seen this as a four down front. He know the he knows his conflict def, conflict back or his second level conflict. Waldo is basically over the ball right now. All right. He's almost told him he's gonna he's gonna pull this and throw the backside slant to the key. He plays the run. We throw the backside slant. All right, Alicia, you want to hit me up with the uh, with the question? Yeah, we have two actually now. So the oh, first, good. I'm, I'm, so there's there's four of us on this on this call right now. <laughs> I think you've got a lot more than four of us here, but yeah. Um, okay, so the first question for you, um, it was one of your earlier schemes. It asked. You identify the Waldo based on safety's positioning, right? How about the yeah. force player on play side and how do you deal with it? Uh, say that one more time. Um, you identify the Waldo based on the safety's positioning. Uh, how about the force player on play side? How do you deal with it? The first player on play side? Okay, I think this is what he's asking. <laughs> okay, so we have to, we're, we're looking for leverage. We have to, we have to force the defense to spread out. We're trying to sp create space, numbers, leverage, space. All right. That's what we're trying to do. Every play in offensive football, that's what you're trying to do. Right. Create one-on-one -on -one matchups for all that other kind of stuff. You're really just trying to create numbers on the defense. You're trying to create leverage on the defense and then you're trying to create space. Okay. So I guess, I think this is his question. All right. So if, if I was just getting a front. Okay. And let's say I'm going to just, just for simplicity. All right. This is kind of like day one install. Okay. And they were playing me in split safety. My wide vision told me split safety. So as a quarterback, right. I should be anticipating. Okay. It is four in the, it is, it is uh, five in the box. Okay. Well, I've got five blockers. So five on five, I'm good. The guys I have to control, right? All right. Are the outside guys. Okay. So I know it's split safety. We're running the ball here. Okay. So I know split safety. Here's Waldo. Here's the nickel. He's Waldo. Okay. So he's my narrow vision guy. Okay, he's my narrow vision guy on this. Well, so I have to decide as a coach, how am I going to handle the backside? Okay, am I going to make the line count the will backer? Okay, if I make him count him, then that's that, then then the the line is all, all automatically made this a six man a six man box. Okay, so my rules for my quarterback kind of go a little bit out the window, right? Because I told him it's wide vision of split safety. All right, there's Waldo. There's your narrow vision guy. He wants to play the run. I throw the key. 
okay? He wants to play out there, or I've got two yards of leverage, throw the key. Make this guy chase this thing, all right? We want these guys chasing our – we want them spreading out. We want to chase everything inside. The defense is spread all our – chase all our key screens from inside out. So we're always looking for leverage on the defense, okay? So as a coach – two sets we talked about three by one but in his rules he would say okay it's zoro zulu okay it's a five man five man uh, zone read concept bam his wide vision is split safety all right he knows there's waldo on split safety okay but he would also know on his alert okay just like you alert if i alert when i alert post safety what's a First thing he thinks about is he thinks about the backside gift. Okay. So here he's going to control this guy. All right. PSL, not after the snap, before the snap. So he's got to make that decision. Either that or, or I've got to, I've got to have my line count him. All right. And that's another discussion. Okay. Which is another way you can handle it. But just, just when you first start out, the quarterback knows there's Waldo. There's my gift, just like he learns on everything, okay? He knows in two by two, he also has the gift on the backside, all right, in split safety, not only post safety. So however, whatever I want to do, if I want to run double hitch or I want to run seam hitch or I want to run pressure out or I want to run just a key screen over here, whatever I tag for his gift on the backside that week, all right, he knows he still has the plus two leverage rule. Okay. If I gain, if I have two yards of leverage, he knows gift. Okay. Might be key one right here. All right. Key one on the backside. Okay. But that's all pre-snap look. Right. So I've decided that before the snap. Okay. After the snap, I'm on Waldo right there. Okay. Now, if he's really cheating inside, all right, he's cheating inside and we're playing a, a Palms team and they like to, they like to bait us, all right, bait us into this cover three look, into the boundary, all right, so that we don't count him. Then we may go ahead and just that week and that week or whatever make what we call a foos call, okay? Okay, the quarterback could make it if he wants, but if, but if we make a foos call, we count him in the box, we count him, all right? That tells him, that tells the quarterback it's a six-man box. Okay, you're now a first level conflict read guy. Now you truly got to read him. Okay, I think that's what he asked. I'm not sure. What's the other question? All right, the other question is from Jeff. How does third and short impact decision making as a quarterback, or how does this play adapt to down over distance situations? Okay, so I'm a uh, like third and short. Yeah. We're a big tempo. I mean, I like, I'm kind of like, I think you have to have tempo calls in. So this call right here on third and short, which I think is one of my favorites. All right. Is for me to build my screen game in the boundary. Okay. For me to build my quick game to the field. All right and then run the run, okay? So I'm thinking I'm, I'm, I'm so this is, a, this is a tempo play for us, okay? Gets called, and it gets called in all situations, all right? It gets called like you just broke one down to the two yard line in the goal line and, and you're in the, inside the five, all right? This is a great tempo run. Uh, you're going along all of a sudden it's third and two. This is a good tempo run. This is one of our base tempo runs, all right? Sit, th thinking this. If, if they're short yardage and they're playing you normal, remember you're tempoed, and they're in cover two, split safety, all right? Okay, well, I'm just finding Waldo. Okay, and I'll block these two guys. And remember I told you, we got we to gotta guarantee ourselves four yards out there, okay? If he wants to, we don't have leverage and he walks out, we've got – we got five on five in the box to run the football. If they want to spin the safeties down, all right, and give me a third, two, third, and three throw out here to the field one-on-one -on -one with off coverage, I'm going to take it. 
Okay. So this is really a three prong and it's a base play for us. So our kids run it all the time. It's a three prong play. I've got a receiver screen. I've got a quick game and I've got a run. So I don't know how many times I've run tight ends in there and, and third and two and, you know, all of a sudden they got freaking, you know, eight guys in the box and I'm trying to make two yards running it at their ass. And I call the play and I go, God dang, I wish I'd just called quick game and throwing it out there to this guy that's got a guy seven yards off him. Or damn, I wish I'd had a, a, a quick screen attached to this so I can just throw a quick screen out there because they've only got two guys over my three. All right. And when they do, when they do say, oh, no, we're going to take away the quick game or we're going to take away the key screen. Now, at least I'm giving my line a chance. And you can do that also with a six man surface. Same type deal. Six man surface in the boundary. Right. Bolt him out there. Do the same type deal with your quick game. So you can change up the look to the defense. But to answer your question is unless I'm and you're going to have some game specific third and short calls you know, four minute offense, goal line, whatever. But in the course of your drive, all right, is that we, we, we do, we have what we call right here is just buzz zombie. This is just zombie. All right. Everybody knows what to do. And then if we want to be in a two by two, it's our, it's all our now, our, our not now package. All right. So now we're running our now package where it's quick game on the backside, key two to the field. All right. And we're, we're, we're just calling just our tight zone or our zone read in there. All right. So if he gets the safety man off, hey, let's throw the hitch, take it. If the Waldo guy right here, he's trying to sneak the run. All right. We can throw the key two out there and make us two yards. So this is what we, this is our now series, now two and three. All right. So I think that answered your question is these are, these are plays that we, we first day of camp, these things are going in and, I think on third and two to three, as a coach, I'm thinking players, not plays. I'm not coming up with a bunch of new third and two to three runs and all this tricky shit. And it, shit, it may be an unbalance is that week. Maybe you unbalance it into the boundary, do the same thing, tight zone, key screen. You know, um, I'm thinking I want to put the, I want to get the ball in the best player's hands in these situations so he can make me a first down. Perfect. Thanks, Coach. I think we're up on time. So yeah, is there well, any that way, was Coach? Fun. That went quick. Yeah, it did. Thanks, is there Alicia. any way for you bet? Is there any way for coaches to contact you? Uh yes, they can contact me at N S Mazzoni at Yahoo. At Yahoo. That'd be my email. Okay. N S Mazzoni at Yahoo. All right. They shoot me, shoot me a question or shoot me the talk or want to get on the phone or get on a Zoom or whatever, just shoot me an email and we'll do it. M-S-M-A-Z-Z-O-N-E at Yahoo. Great. Thanks, Coach. I think that's... All right. Hey, thanks for inviting me. I enjoyed it. You bet. I do, thanks, you know, I, you guys know I do anything for Huddle, right? So... <laughs> yes. We All appreciate right. it. All right, guys. See ya.